to want to get an airfoil curve in SOLIDWORKS. So we can just start by making our own. So we're going to use the spline tool and just start defining a set of points. That'll be the top of the airfoil here. Something like that could be the bottom. And we're going to need these two to be tangent to each other. So that could be an airfoil. Now we're going to want to make a part out of this. So we're going to want to put, for instance, the leading edge into the origin and to be able to manipulate this airfoil and stretch it or change its length, its cord length and angle of attack. But if we see, if we start moving any points, the spline is just going to adapt to that single point moving. So what we're going to do is make these splines proportional. And after that, we can now stretch and rotate this airfoil as one. So we can, for instance, put the leading edge onto the origin and we can define a cord, set this cord length, let's say call it 10 inches, and we can give it an angle of attack as well. So now if we define this angle here, that will constrain the entire airfoil. So that might not be exactly how you would how you would constrain your airfoil. For instance, in this case, the, the leading edge actually the airfoil protrudes out farther than that. So you might use a vertical line with a tangency, something like that. But this gives you a, a general idea of what you might do to get an airfoil. Now, sometimes when you're making a part out of this airfoil, and you're going to be making cutouts, things like that. It can be a bit annoying to have these points there that your uh, your details that you're adding in might want to snap onto them. So something some people do will be to create a second sketch and project in the airfoil from the one above and hide this one. So now when we're dealing with this one, it's a bit cleaner to, let's say, make cutouts, things like that. And if you wanted to change the shape of it, you would go in and edit here. You might, you might have an external, so this might just be a driven dimension, and you might have an external point to grab on here, like maybe a point from a plan form sketch and you'd make those two together. So obviously the airfoil that we just, we just freehanded this, so it might not be the best performing airfoil, but thankfully there's been a huge amount of work done to create high performance airfoils. And there's a lot of resources out there to take those airfoil curves and we can import those into SOLIDWORKS. So that's the next thing we're going to do. So we're here on airfoiltools.com. We have this Epler 420 airfoil we want to import into SOLIDWORKS. So the data for the spline points is here in several different formats. I like to use this one here. So this is a series of points where the left column here is the length along the cord, normalized to one. So this is the this is the trailing edge, and the other column is the depth of the airfoil, so the or the height. So as we get towards zero in this column, it doesn't quite reach zero, but this would be where the the leading edge is, and where these are more negative, that's the the bottom half of the airfoil, and where they're more positive, that's the top half. So we can take 
these data and import them into Excel. But first, let's take a look at our, our coordinate system here. So we're going to put this airflow into the right plane. And that means that all the X will be zero. And the Z will be along the chord length. And the Y will be the depth of the airflow. So I've gone ahead and taken this data directly into Excel. That's straight from that file from airflowtools.com. And so I've made a column for the X of all zeros, the Y of the depth column, and the Z of the chord length uh, or the chord fraction. So we can go ahead and take this data, just copy it. And here I've created a text file. Go ahead and save that. And this data can be used now. We can put it in to SolidWorks. So to do that, we can go in, go insert, curve, curve through X, Y, Z points, browse to where it is. And we're going to have to change it to text file here. And so there we go. It, it lists the points for us. And we can just choose OK for that. And you can see it's normalized. So it's, it's only one inch long. So one of the ways we can use this curve is we can create a sketch. We can project the curve into that sketch. And so now we have, we have a sketch that has the airflow in it with a leading and trailing edge. And we can't yet delete this curve because the projection creates that relation. So if we delete the curve, they're both gone unless we go ahead and get rid of the projection. And now we have a curve that remembers its proportionality and its shape um, that we can use to, for instance, let's now get rid of this curve. And there's no more dependencies, so we can get rid of it. Let's, let's hide these ones. So for instance, we could use this maybe by let's make a vertical line. Tell this to be coincident and tangent. And then we might bring this over somewhere here. And the, the third constraint there will, will define where this is. Now, this isn't perfect since, especially for an airfoil like this, that spline is very tight back there. Um, it can be hard to work with when you're creating offsets, things like that. Uh, even you might not want the actual physical part to be that tight back there, to be that sharp. Um, so not just difficulties during cutting, but difficulties when you're laser cutting or manufacturing this. Um, so there's, there's some other ways we can do this. So let's take a look at some other ways. So this is an Excel sheet that uh, processes that data a little bit more just to make it a bit more practical. So directly from Airfoil Tools, I just moved the, I translated the entire shape to the origin by, by taking the, the point closest to the leading edge and forcing that to be zero and zero. And then rotated this to force the top points to be zero the top, uh, the depth at the trailing edge and uh, the one at the bottom as well. And then just normalize this um, so that it would be one again. And so here we know that we have, we have some control points for this spline. We can say that the one and zero and the one and zero are sort of like control points and the zero and zero for sure. 
that's the leading edge and that's going to be part of the airfoil. But if we choose all these points, that's a closed curve and that includes that really tight trailing edge. So what I'm going to do instead from these points is just take, so here I have um, these columns on the right that'll be X, Y, and Z. And we're going to unnormalize it. So let's say I want an airfoil that's 28 inches long. And we're not going to take the one and zeros. We're just going to take every point except for the trailing edge. And for that, so here we have, we have this data and we're going to go into SolidWorks and import this one now. So insert curve XYZ. So now we have the same airfoil, but there's a kind of a gap at the butt, at the, at the trailing edge. So how we might use this one, let's look at another sketch, project this in, then exit this, oh, get rid of the dependency there. Now we can, may as well go ahead and delete this. So in here, now, if we're going to use this, let's say, let's say we had a point here for the leading edge, and we were going to have a point here for the trailing edge, and that might come from a plan form shape, from uh, your assembly geometry, things like that. So let's again we can create the leading edge. Create the leading edge constraints. Now, here this this is quite a maneuverable, uh, easy to work with uh, curve or spline. We're going to close the back by creating tangent lines along them. And so this is tangent, this is tangent. Now if we merge these points, that is a closed spline now. So there we could coincidence it to there and there. Now we have a constrained airfoil. So another way we can use this curve is to go, let's import it into a sketch again, project it in, and you might want to, instead of manipulating it as a curve, you can go to Tools, Spline Tools, and Simplify this. And then here it's it's only coming with 39 points. You can make sure that the tolerances includes all the points there. And then make sure it's proportional. Then we have all the points. We can we can choose, I mean when we import it we'll we'll know which one was the the leading edge. And we can manipulate it like that. Some people prefer that. And that's about it. That's, that's the several ways that you can import airfoils into SolidWorks. So one further thing, 
You might be wondering what happens if I want to get my airfoil not in the right plane. For instance, a lot of aircraft have dihedral. You might want that airfoil at an angle. So you don't have to worry about getting those X, Y, Z coordinates in 3D. There's a better way to do that. So let's open this up and show how we can do that. So in this case, this OML is for a wing that has dihedral. So the root airfoil, the tip airfoil are at an angle. So we can go ahead and bring in the same curve that we used before. That'll come in in the right plane. And we'll make a sketch in the right plane and project it in. Get rid of the dependency, get rid of the curve. And all we need to do here, I'm just gonna, so I want it to get into this plane here, the plane at the root. That's where I want it to get into, and it's in the right plane right now. So all I need to do is Control C to copy it, go over to that plane and Control V, and then it's in there. I can even get rid of this one. Copying it doesn't keep any relation, it just makes an unlinked copy. And now we can go about using that airflow in our plane. And we did not have to worry about those X, Y, Z coordinates in 3D, so that's a much easier way to do it. So now we're going to take a look at the performance parameters that we see on airfoiltools.com, including the coefficient of lift, coefficient of drag, and especially the confusing one that I found at first is moment. So we're gonna get a physical interpretation of the coefficient of moment that is listed there.